Hey everybody, it's Ripley again, and today we're going to do the graph of f of theta equals cosine of theta. Now hopefully you've already seen um, f of theta equals sine theta on the video, so this should be relatively easy for you. Remember that f of theta equals cos theta. We're going to steal values from the unit circle, and instead of stealing y values like we did for sine theta, we're going to go ahead and grab these x values. So these x values are what's going to come out and th that are going to help create our point. Now there's one thing that I wanted to spell a little bit of confusion here because when I do when I write f of theta equals cosine of theta we often think of f of theta as being the y value on the Cartesian plane and that's correct it is the y value f of theta lives up here and then theta will live down here but where there's some confusion sometimes with students is they'll think, well, I'm grabbing these x values here. So, wait, I thought f of theta was y, which we're calling cos theta, but cos theta is x. Okay, now, that is the difference between it, the geometry of the cosine values, or excuse me, of the trigonometric values, and graphing them as functions. We're talking about functions now. So I steal the x coordinates off of these points on the unit circle, but those x coordinates become my y values on the Cartesian plane. This is a geometric construct that we've used here to help make these points. Now we're getting down to the nitty gritty as far as putting them on um, the Cartesian plane. Again, like I did with sine, I'm going to borrow an app that can do this infinitely better for me. Alright, so hopefully you remember this guy. What a great app. Don't forget to visit the website and you can play with it. I did sine theta before, now I'm going to go to cos. Alright, here goes cosine. Now, you've got, just a refresher, you got, notice when I cruise this thing around, look at the, ch look at what changes. Over here in this window, I've got my red is um, theta, my x value on my my point on my unit circle is blue and my y value is green. So notice everything's blue or red, which is good. Now watch, first quadrant. Now we know when theta is zero that this point is one comma zero, so I start at one. Ignore the y value from this circle. We do not even care what happens to the y value. As I cruise around through the first quadrant, those fantastic fives that we talked about back here with the bamboo paper right here, this these five points, well, we know that there's an infinite number, carve out this part of the curve right here. So what you're looking at right there is this part of the curve right here. And then as I keep right on cruising around through the second quadrant, so I'm going to pi here, I've carved out this portion of the curve. As I go through the third quadrant, I carve out, this is through three pi halves, I go back through that portion and then right back to 2 pi. And the whole thing starts all over as far as what we can see here because, again, 2 pi is coterminal with 0. Now, let's just discuss some of the particulars of this. Again, since I'm pulling points off of the unit circle, the biggest that cosine can be is 1 here and here right, which is at 0 and 2 pi, and the smallest that cosine can be is negative 1. They're coming off the unit circle. So the absolute largest that the x value can be on the unit circle is 1, and the smallest it can be, or the most negative, excuse me, it can be is negative 1. All right, now let's follow this through real quick. I start at 1, comma 0, and I finish in the first quadrant, excuse me, I start at 1, 0, and I finish when I get pi halves, I finish at 0, 1. So cosine goes from 1 down to 0. Through the second quadrant, I go from pi halves to 3 pi halves. Notice I'm at 0, 1, and I finish at negative 1, 0, so I end down here. And then through the third quadrant, so from pi to 3 pi halves, I start at negative 1, and I finish at 0, right there. And then through the fourth quadrant, I start at 0. Notice I'm saying I'm starting at 0 because this point is 0, comma, well, it's close to 0, comma, um, negative 1 and I whoop right through and I start back over. All right, now let's go back to our bamboo paper real quick. Understand that any theta value can work for cosine. If I throw any theta value into cosine, I will get a value back out. Now, the applet only gives you this. However, we know that theta can be 3 pi, it can be 17 pi fourths, it can be 99 pi 56 or whatever. So this continues 
like this, this cosine wave, whoops, this cosine wave continues forever. Unlike on the applet, let me move this out of the way, notice on the applet, it only gives us the first four quadrants, so it gives us this chunk right here, which I will sometimes affectionately refer to as my mother graph. That's the one you're going to want to visualize. That's the one that you're going to want to have on the hard drive. All right. Now, real quick, just like if I go f of theta equals cosine of theta, just like with sine, let's go ahead and define our domain and our range before we're done today. Okay. So the domain of cosine, again, I can put in any theta value that I want, and I will get a cosine of theta back out. Again, just because we're rotating around the unit circle. So the domain is all reals. The fancy way of writing that is from negative infinity to infinity, non-inclusive, of course. And then the range, the biggest that x can be is 1, and the smallest, most negative that can be is negative 1. And that's bracketed because we know that we get there. All right, I hope this was helpful. Go ahead and check out that applet to get your brain wrapped around it a little further. And uh, we'll talk about it some more in class tomorrow. Have a great day.